What's going on guys? Chuck here with another awesome Blu-ray purchase. Well, after watching video after video after video of everybody else uh, getting this, it was finally my turn. Of course, I'm talking about the Arrow Films release of 1993's Demolition Man 4K Limited Edition. I was very excited to get this. I really enjoy and, and this film a lot. Uh, I was very surprised actually when Arrow made the announcement. I think a lot of people were um, just kind of came on over, but this is really cool to get this. What was also interesting is that earlier this summer, I had a chance for Chris and I to see this at the drive in. They were having a what they call a guilty pleasures night. You know, they did it last year. Like, you know, last year they showed over the top, which, you know, I'm looking forward to getting that somewhere in 4K. <laughs> um, <clears throat> maybe that's like a Kino Lorber thing. But anyways, so, yeah, I got to, you know, get Chris to watch it. He really enjoyed it. In this, and I hadn't seen it in a while myself. And, you know, just forgot how much fun it is and, you know, enjoyable. And then, then when they said that Arrow made the announcement that it was coming out, it was going to be a nice 4K a limited edition set. I was so over the moon excited. Um, what's also cool about this, this is actually my, this is a major upgrade for me because here is my original copy of Demolition Man. That's right. It is a snapper DVD. I have never replaced this since the, this is the only version of Demolition Man I've ever had. Uh, this is, you know, again, one of the early, early DVDs uh, from Warner Brothers. Take a look at the back here. Let's look at the special features. Uh, interactive menus. Woo! <laughs> Production notes, which is basically like either like a little screenshot or it came with a booklet or something. No, I, I think I'm pretty sure it's probably like, if you remember right, you just go on here and menu and just click on something and just read the notes on the screen. Um, and then theatrical trailer. Uh, scene access. Uh, English and Espanol subtitles. English, Francois and Espanol. Uh, and then includes a running commentary on an alternate audio track by director Marco uh, was it Brambilla and producer Joel Silver. I mean, they, and that's what exclamation point. So they're really hyping until this is very, very early DVD, DVD technology. Um, let's see here. And then here's your <laughs> the chapter list. And it's a flipper disc, one side widescreen, other side full screen. And it came with a catalog which has not even been opened, which I'm not going to open it. <laughs> but, you know, that's pretty cool. Buy one, get one free. And this is nice. They actually sent here a regional coding map for DVDs and how to take care of your DVDs. Again, this is very, very early on. This is kind of neat. Oof. So, yeah, this is the only copy of Demolition Man I've ever had. It, you know, served me well. But now we're going straight from DVD to 4K. And let me tell you, it's a jump. It's a very big jump. Just finished watching this. Um, it looked beautiful. <laughs> it was... Uh, I'm just, I, I don't know, again, I'm not the most technical, uh, I can go into all details of text and all this, the specs and, you know, numbers or whatever. I can only tell you that the picture looks very sharp, very crisp. Uh, I, of course, I'm, you know, I'm watching this also on a 120 inch, you know, projection screen, um, which has HDR 10. And everything, the colors was, were very bright and very vibrant, vibrant especially in the middle. There's a lot of daylight, um, which is, you know, something that was also unusual for a futuristic film, is they have a lot of, you know, it being a utopian as opposed to a dystopian setting. So you got a lot of bright daylight and some vivid colors uh, throughout the uh, San Angeles city in the movie. And they really pop. They're really, they're really good. I mean, not anything overly done, but it's, it's all crisp and it's clean. It's, it's really, really cool. But all the other images look good, um, clear. <clears throat> the skin tones look gay. I mean, it, it just, I really like, you know, the image of this. And it looks, looks just so pristine. Uh, there was like a, there is a Dolby Atmos, I believe, and a, I don't know, a 5.1. I listened to it in the 5.1 because I do not have Dolby Atmos. 
but the 5.1 was good and it's got a good surround effects it's you know the the back and forth on your left right channels are really good audio was very clear um it's, it's a very good sound mix it's not too overwhelming in some areas and quiet in others it's pretty it's nice and balanced and like i said it's it's a good surround uh, uh, uh track so very enjoyable um Let's take a look here. Again, there's the nice close-up. And something that... These back with all your goodies. I'll get a close-up of that later on. That Something that Arrow's been doing lately is putting slip covers around their big chunky boxes, which I kind of like. Um, I don't know how everybody feels about those. I like them. I think it's a nice way to actually kind of protect the old... Because the boxes are kind of almost like a canvasy. Oh, there's that smell. <laughs> kind of a canvasy feel. Um, but they can also get dinged up pretty easily. So it's nice to kind of have this around them to, to cover them up. Um, what's different in this case from what I've noticed is usually the slip cover and the box kind of have the same image, but not in this case. In this one, they've got different artwork here. And this, of course, the logo from the, you know, the Cocteau, you know, the rehabilitation. This is what they're wearing on their jumpsuits. Uh, the prisons are. So there's that at the back. You've got the... San Angeles uh, Police Department badge, be well. Here's your goodies inside. But, you know, this isn't too bad. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about this. <laughs> it's not too... I mean, I, I know why it's there, I get it, but it's not really... In a lot of ways, it actually looks like Maximilian from Black Hole. <laughs> you really look at that. Um, but it's not bad. I mean, it, it represents the film, so that's the important thing. Uh, I do, like I said, the, the badge I, I like a lot. This image, I'm not so keen on, but again, so I, the reason why this is nice to have the slip cover because you get that original poster art you can put right over here, which is really cool. Let's slide this out here. What we've got, and there's the Blu-ray, or excuse me, 4K. Get all this stuff out in here. And it is only a 4K disc. These sets were sold as a Blu-ray, you know, limited edition and Blu-ray set. And then your reverse artwork is the same as the slip box. Or the chunky box or, you know, whatever you want to call it. Get that back in there just right. And let's see what we got here. Goody wise I mean, so you got a little flyer for aerial streaming service with the demolition <laughs> poster on the other side. And you've got stills, your movie lobby cards. Let's go through these real quick. You got Sly in all his glory. Wesley Snipes, who does a fantastic job. He is so great and memorable. And at times, it's a little, kind of, you know, it's like hot and terrifying. He's almost like, almost Joker-like, you know, in, the, in this movie, which is really cool. It's chaos, for chaos sake, as it were. And Sandra Bullock is just, she's great. I, I love Sandra Bullock, and she's really good in this movie, too. There's Wesley Snipes doing some of that martial arts he's known for. And you know, Sly with a big gun. People always love Sly with a big gun. <laughs> so those are your art cards, or postcards, or whatever they are. And then you've got your poster in here. Ooh, got that very good arrow smell. And much like everything else, you've got. It's going to have the original art. That smells good. <laughs> Pull that back and kind of get a full look at that. And on the other side, you got that new artwork. You've also got some stickers. Up in hell. And of course, the infamous three seashells. I also those in the bathroom down here just for fun. <laughs> and finally. You've got your booklet, the morale, morality violations, which is pretty cool. And there's your the usual great write-up. 
that Errol provides with these booklets, which I really love. Some great pictures. So, just a fantastic addition, and I'm really glad that, you know, a movie like Demolition Man got something like this. This is really cool. <laughs> this is, put this stuff back in here. This is a, again, this is a fun, fun action movie, and like I was telling Chris when I took him to see this, because also this time of the drive-in, we were, you know, I was lucky enough to show him Robocop, they played that too, and I told him, I was like, you know, you're, they don't make movies like this anymore, these kind of, you know, action, you don't really have those big action heroes, you know, like you did in the, you know, 80s and 90s, and can I, is this, oh yeah, because I didn't go in there. <laughs> And apparently neither did, neither did that. I will get this sorted out in just a second. Once I figure out what it is I'm doing. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Like I said, you know, telling Chris, they don't make these kind of just throw everything at the screen. Great action, you know, one-liner just, dare I say it, balls at a wall <laughs> kind of. Uh, craziness you know, that's and it's a shame but again like I've said before that time period is such a the perfect or the best time period for you know pop culture in, in general not just you know like I said the 80 I mean no, granted this is 93 so it's overlapping but it's still reminiscent of what was coming in the 80s like people say you know it takes a decade about five years before it becomes that decade so I think we're still, we're still, you know, 495, we're still kind of in the, at the end of, you know, the 80s trailing into the 90s. So the all remnants of all those action, the action 80s are still going in the, stronger in the 90s before they kind of fizzle out by the time you get to the end of the 90s and the 2000s. But this is a great one. Uh, again, it's just so much fun. It's a nice, good, quick pace. Um, great characters, you know, Sylvester Stallone and Wesley Sipes are so good in it. Um, yeah, I can't say enough good things about Demolition Man. So, what do we got on here, special feature wise? Uh, and I will put this up here because you don't want to see me try and stare at this <laughs> this here with my bad eyes. Um, oh, should we note it? Okay, this is a brand new 4K restoration from the original 35 millimeter camera negative by Arrow Films, approved by director Marco uh, Brambilla. It includes both the domestic Taco Bell and international Pizza Hut versions of the film. Uh, presented by a seamless branching. And let me talk about that. I watched the the Pizza Hut version, as I'm so sure so many people were very excited to get uh, and see, because it's been talked about before overseas. You know, it's very, because it's, it's a infamous, or I'm it's a very famous joke, I should say, in the film that, you know, Taco Bell won the, you know, the, the, the franchise wars and is the last restaurant standing. So they, they own, they're the, the only game in town, as it were. And because kind of the joke here. But apparently overseas, you know, internationally, I guess, I don't know if Taco Bell wasn't a big thing. I've heard different very, you know, versions. But whatever the case may be, they went with Pizza Hut instead. Uh, so people always talk about, you know, the, it's, it's weird how fandom gets, you know, talking about different, we're so concerned about different variations of film, even when it's talking about, you know, product placement being different in one film or the other, that we're just so, oh, well, we got to have that cut. Um, and you, if you don't know, if you haven't seen whatever, you need to just, if you're excited to see it, temper your expectations down a bit. Because in my mind, too, I was thinking, well, they, is it like a totally different, you know, different scenes filmed where they did the same scene, but it is, you know, said, did the Pizza Hut line change around slightly? It is not. It is the same film. They just overdub the lines. You know, instead of where everybody says, anytime anybody says Taco Bell, they are dubbed over. Where their lips clearly say Taco Bell, they are dubbed over as saying Pizza Hut. And any close up of a Taco Bell logo is changed to a Pizza Hut logo. And yeah, in some cases, it's clearly in some cases it's clearly superimposed because the image is kind of shaking and moving. Uh, over it, which is really, you know, jarring. However, if you look closely in some, uh, like wide shots, like I saw one, like right after, you know, the conversation that Sonic Bullock and Sylvester Stallone having on the way to 
Taco Bell slash Pizza Hut. You know, they explain what happened, and they cut away, and it has wide shot while the interstate. Off the side, you see, you still see a Taco Bell sign. It's right there. You go to the restaurant, of course, the truck out there that has the, the Pizza Hut logo now, and it's just right, right there, this Pizza Hut. Uh, you go into the restaurant, as they're all sitting down and eating, in the back windows behind you, clearly see the Taco Bell logo still in the windows. You know, they didn't change those because they're in, in the background. Once you get the more close-up shot, if it's in the foreground, then they're superimposed with the Pizza Hut logo. So that was interesting. They didn't change everything, just if they just changed what shows. Um, and I was, I was curious because, you know, when even when they mention, you know, uh, particular, like, food from Taco Bell, they just change it to piece of pizza. <laughs> or something like that from this, uh, what Sylvester Stallone says. Um, but then when they cut to the images, and here's their thing, because when they gave them the, their food, I thought maybe they'd be like a, a fancy kind of pizza slice or something. No, it's still nachos with, you know, fancy dressing or whatever, however they did them up. So they didn't, you know, again, a little disappointing, um, only because you were expecting to see something really different and you're not. You're just basically seeing someone trying to quickly re-edit a film to change up some stuff for another market. Um, so there's that. <laughs> but nonetheless, it's still cool to have for completest sake, I guess, historical purposes. You know, you've got both of these cuts. And you know, it's, it's all kind of cool to, you know, look at it and say, you know, this one cut was shown over here for this reason or whatever. And it was just because... One was Pizza Hut, one was Taco Bell, and they're all under the same umbrella, which is Pepsi. <laughs> so, you know, who knows? Maybe, you know, I'm surprised it wasn't a third cut where uh, one of them went in a different country. It's KFC. Because, <laughs> you know, how that goes. Okay. Moving on. Um, uh, okay. We can all have HDR compatible. Uh, where is it? Okay. Brand new audio commentary by director Marco uh, Brambella and screenwriter Daniel Waters. Brand new audio commentary by film historian Mike White of the Projection Booth Podcast. Archive audio commentary by Marco uh, Brambella and producer Joel Silver. So that's the commentary that's on that DVD I own. Uh, Demolition Design, a new interview with production designer David L. Snyder. Cryo Action, a new interview with stunt coordinator Charles uh, Pr Prasini. Biggs Body Shop, a new interview with special makeup effects artist Chris Biggs, Tacos and Hockey Pucks, a new interview with body effects set coordinator Jeff Farley, Somewhere Over the Rambo, a new visual essay by film scholar John Nelson. And that was interesting because it's basically really doing a deep uh, uh, analysis of Demolition Man, um, comparing it to some of the cultural themes um, at the time what was going on socially which is kind of interesting and then you have your theatrical trailer image gallery and so on and so forth so again a very nice uh stacked uh set from arrow now the special features on here are not very long Let me get this in here oops <laughs> careful Try, try getting this back in here in decent shape. Uh, the longest of the features is the um, uh, video essay. It goes about 17 minutes, I think. And then the rest go from about 14 to down, you know, 5, 9, you know, less than 10 minutes. So they go pretty quick. But they're informative and they're interesting. Uh, you're not going to get anything with any of the major stars. You know, the film is mostly crew. But, you know, it's cool that they, you know, got any anybody to come on here and talk about this and, and give you some kind of insight into the film. And you know, the commentaries, I'm sure, will be interesting. got the director front, uh, on here and a couple other things. So I'm sure those will be fun listens. Fun listens, fun, you know, fun to listen to. So, but nonetheless, the film looks and sounds great, and that's always the important thing. Um, and this is, Arrow has done a wonderful job with this. I'm so excited I'm excited that I finally got mine because I said everybody was showing up. You know, I was seeing it on YouTube. Everybody's got yours. Where's mine? I want mine. Um, so I finally got it. Uh, check it out. It's great. Uh, if you can still pick it up, I highly recommend you do so. Um, you will not be disappointed, especially if you are a fan of The Demolition Man. Go get it. You won't regret it. 
So that is it for this one. If you enjoyed this, click thumbs up, share, subscribe, leave me a comment below. Uh, let me know if, you know, when was the last time you watched Demolition Man? Do you, you know, do you still have this DVD and it's the only thing you got like me? <laughs> or, you know, or, or just say hi. I'll always take hi. So until next time, this is Chuck saying I will see you on the other side.